shit, piss, cunt, YouTube has changed its terms of service. I am more afraid of the FTC than I am of YouTube. So this video is not made for children. Fuck! Please, anything but sneezing. Ugh. Hello, it is I, Ruthie, and <coughs> and I'm dying. I'm not actually dying. I'm just really sick, and for some reason, I felt the most inspired to make content when I feel like death. So while I'm making the script for the Fix It video of Twilight, I decided that I wanted to do a small video to tide you over until I do that video. I wanna try really, really hard on this Fix It video. Um, so I'm doing a lot of scripting and stuff, and because I work like three jobs, it's kind of hard to make time, so it might be a while, but I want to do these small fix-it videos in my everyday life of stuff I watch to tide you over until the big, the big. So what have I watched recently? I, like many humans, have a Disney Plus subscription, and now that means that I'm gonna, I, you know what that means, I'm watching Gargoyles. I've only watched the first four episodes, and to be honest, I don't remember anything about Gargoyles of whence I was a child, but I do remember really liking the Goliath voice actor, which is that, the big, tall, blue one. Upon watching this as an adult, I realized that this cartoon is two short steps into being a cartoon made for adults. I, well, I assume this was made in the 90s. And back in the 90s, not a lot of cartoons or were really made for adults. There were animes, of course, but is Western cartoon and Western cartoons weren't really made for adults that I know of. So what does this mean? This means that Gargoyles a, was made for children when personally, in my opinion, it should have been for adults. So that's what we're doing. Band-Aid fix. Make Gargoyles for adults for the first four episodes. We're just going to be working on the opening of this series. I haven't watched any past episode four, so, you know. We're just gonna do up to episode four. This is gonna be really short. It should be anyway. To give you a rundown on how gargoyles work, um, the first four episodes, we uh, start up the uh, cartoon with uh, explosions on top of a skyscraper, and there's a, pol a police office lady. Uh, she's actually a detective. I really don't remember her name. I think it's Eliza or something like that. And she is like looking up, and this, there's stones falling everywhere. It's all dramatic. And she is like, I'm going to find out what's going up there. And then we go back in time to 1440 Scotland, which I was not expecting. I don't know why, but I was not expecting to go into the past. Okay, we're in Scotland. We're chilling. The gargoyles are keeping this Scotland peoples alive in this great castle that they all live in together. And all the Scottish people except the... Uh, the captain of the guard are real afraid of the gargoyles, even though they're keeping them safe. I really hate humans, by the way. Like, they are so obscenely afraid of them, which is kind of funny because they've seemed to have protected these people for a very long time. They treat them like beasts, even though they are obviously intelligent and just, you know what? I am not here to review this. I'm here to make this into an adult show. I'm just letting you know what's going on. Sorry, sorry. Anyway, we have pushed back some Viking invaders that want to take our land or something like that with the gargoyles help. And then the queen is like, don't let them into my dining hall and whatever. It's, it's whatever. Anyway, long story short, the gargoyles fight against the Viking invaders, push them back the next day. Goliath and, and the older gargoyle go after the Vikings that they push back to uh, essentially bully them into never coming back. This idea was given by the captain of the guard. And then uh, there's some gargoyles in the, the hatchery where they have tiny little baby gargoyles chilling. Uh, they're not babies, they're eggs, but whatever. Also, there's a lady gargoyle. She's really badass in the first four episodes. She's actually the villain in the future, but right now she's really cool. And then the Viking invaders uh, give Goliath and the old uh, gargoyle the slip. Um, they tricked them and they fly back 
and the gargoyles, uh, a lot of the gargoyles, gargoyles, the gurgles, a lot of the gargoyles have been smashed. And um, we find out that the captain, which is someone that they trusted, was the one that betrayed them. Hoo hoo, twist! Upon learning this, everyone's all upsetty spaghetti, and the Vikings come in, take over the castle and they take the princess and then Goliath swings down and he's like no stop it and there's a wizard that doesn't like the gargoyles he uh, is in the same room as the princess and the bad guys and the bad guys are like we're gonna kill the princess and the princess is like no and the princess runs away so the vikings go after her and the wizard is all upsetty spaghetti and he has this extremely very specific spell that says I will ca I will make sure that these gargoyles are set to stone until the castle is above the sky. Okay, I hope this is making sense. I'm kind of just rambling here. But at the end of the day, the gargoyles get betrayed by the captain. Uh, the wizard assumes that the princess or the queen or whatever is dead, but she's not because Goliath saves her. The wizard makes all of the other gargoyles go to bed for a thousand years until the, the, the castle rises above the sun. And then Goliath is the only one awake. The wizard finds out that he done fucked up, and of course the only pages that the Vikings managed to get a hold of was the counter curse. And then uh, Goliath is like, okay, I guess you're gonna put me to sleep for as long as these guys so just do the spell again and keep an eye out on all the baby gargoyles that are going to be coming out of the egg soon. They're asleep for a thousand years, they get woken up in 1990s New York City because some fucking rich guy was like, hey, this castle I'm going to put on top of a skyscraper. Not structurally sound, don't care. And they get woken up and they're like, sorry, we can't trust humans the last time we did. Uh, we got put to sleep for a couple hundred years. By a couple hundred years, I mean a thousand. Somebody comes and invades the top of the castle and they fight them off and then the detective comes up there and learns the existence of gargoyles and that's about where I'm at right now. How am I gonna make this better? Well, for one, I'm going to make, I'm gonna make it for adults, not, so, not anything sexy. We're, this isn't HBO, okay? This is probably just Adult Swim. To be honest, it's probably not really going to be for adults. It's probably going to be more for teenagers uh, because all that I'm really doing is smoothing the story out and adding blood. The first thing that I don't like about this series that I'm going to fix is um, I don't want to be in New York City at the beginning uh, because uh, it goes half of the first episode is in New York and then we go back to Scotland in 1440. Get rid of that opening scene and just be in Scotland. And we're probably going to extend this to like eight episodes because obviously I have unlimited funding. Here's, here's what we got. Here's, here's, here's what we got. We're in Scotland, right? 1440. What we can do is really, really build up the Scottish stuff. The reason being is that this is the first day of episode, so everyone's just gonna assume that this is just a show that takes place in Scotland, and then you do the twist, and it's not in Scotland anymore. We're in New York. The twist would hit a lot harder if we were in Scotland for eight episodes. Maybe 12. I don't know. There is a comic book on Gargoyles as well. I think the show ran for three seasons, so there might be some canon that I don't know, but I want to, I want the castle, essentially, to be there. Like, the gargoyles made it or something. Or, got it. So, there's already canon magic. Straight up, the guy puts the gargoyles under a spell to keep them in stone for a thousand years. They're straight up already magic. Why not just run with it? As you can tell, this has no script. I'm just freaking yakking to you right now but I got it so this castle gets built and they have these gargoyles and the wizard is essentially like I'm gonna make these into beings these are now beings that can on that only turn on at night for whatever fucking reason because magic the king whoo oh guys oh man the gears are turning I've got so many ideas right now so the king right 
turns the magical king, by the way, magical king and his magical brother, and then he has a uh, he has the lady, the princess, or maybe my magical uncle, or something. I don't know, magical best friend. We have to keep the wizard that turns the gargoyles into stone for a thousand years. We need to keep him in here. We'll just make him the best friend of the king. King does it, makes a new being. The king and the people really, really, really like these gargoyles. Like a lot, because the king made it. Well, we can have a twist where the Vikings that come later, they uh, come, they kill the king. The gargoyles, you know, probably were just like, oh no, we're a little bit too late or something dramatic. The king dies and that gives everybody an excuse to hate the gargoyles. Ah, you with me so far? That would be the first four episodes. Make gargoyles, life with gargoyles, death, two episodes of Aftermath, and then we'll time skip to where the princess is the queen. And she hates the gargoyles, takes away their rights, and the gargoyles are like, ah, it's whatever, you know, we kind of deserve it or something like that. And then the queen looks like she's about ready to be killed, and then the wizard is like, hey, fuck you, gargoyles, you obviously aren't cool, you know, I'm gonna make sure that you're stoned forever, or something to that effect. Vikings come again, they get betrayed by the captain of the guard, so not only are they hated, but they've also been betrayed by humans, and the gargoyles, uh, even though the gargoyles didn't do anything wrong and they saved the queen, uh, the wizard still turns the gargoyles. We're gonna take out that stupid uh, raise the castle above the sky and just do a thousand, hey, and just do that they've been, and just do the spell of like, they're gonna be asleep for a thousand years, and then uh, boom, boom goes the dynamite we fixed it and then we go to new york and when it's like oh my god they are asleep for a thousand years fuck now we're in new york and then the rest of the show can happen i don't know about you but having uh them being conceptualized all the way to the downfall of um essentially you, you eventually just, you kind of just watch the life and proverbial death, extended sleep, sleeping beauties of the gargoyles in this eight episodes. And you can really characterize the gargoyles. In the show, at first, Goliath is the only one with a name, and then Eliza gives Hudson, which is the older one, the older gargoyle, he gives him the name after the Hudson River. So it'd be really cool for the gargoyles to really not have a concept of name and not really care. And we can also see that they make babies. Well, I mean, we don't need to see that part, but we can, you can, you know, there's there's eggs and stuff. Or maybe there's, there's little baby gargoyles. I don't know, man. It's whatever. Let me just recap. Just super quick. And then we'll check. I, all right. Episode one. The gargoyles are brought to life by the king who have built a castle for his people in the middle of Scotland sometime in the 1300s. The magical king is wise, fair, and probably has a really cool beard. He names the first gargoyle, but the other gargoyles don't really care for names, so it's Goliath and the gargoyles. The townspeople uh, really, really like the gargoyles because it was made by the magical king. Episode two. We do a life in the day of the gargoyles. Maybe a couple of years have passed and we have some tiny little gargoyles because we learn that they make kids and the princess is older. The king is also getting older, probably maybe even older on years to where he's starting to get white in his super awesome epic beard. By the way, the king really fucking buff. And then at the end of this episode is when the Vikings invade. We have to have that cliffhanger. We gotta give people a reason to come back the next week. Episode three, there's a really long battle with blood and guts and gore because this is for teenagers and teenagers like that stuff. Goliath and them, they've practiced being badasses. So they, they're ripping apart these Vikings, but no, no, no. Something bad is happening. At the end of episode three, the king gets stabbed right through the gut. Blood is dripping down his face and he locks eyes with Goliath who's just going down and he says, protect them with his last dying breath. And the Viking king, who is obviously now the rival king, who has also got a very cool beard, is like, ah, retreat, retreat. We got what we came for. And then they retreat. 
because they thought that killing the king would destabilize this this castle nation. So now we're on episode four. Episode four is the aftermath. This is where the best friend of the king really, really starts hating the Goliath. This is where the princess can maybe misunderstand everything and just really hates him because she doesn't really know what to do with her grief. We're going to deal with this really big theme of probably really needs to learn. Fucking, you need a therapist, lady. Just get a therapist. And essentially this episode is everyone dealing with their grief of losing the super awesome king with an awesome beard. And maybe there can be like um, a funeral that has convenient rain. Episode five is a time skip. Some of the kid gargoyles are a little bit older. The, the princess is now the queen. She is older, more mature, and there's a lot of hostility between her, the gargoyles, and the townspeople of the gargoyles. The gargoyles, I'd like for them to maybe not really understand the hostility. Like, they understand why, but they don't really return that hostility. Maybe, maybe they really do believe it is their fault that the king died since the king made them and he died. I mean, it's not going to be their fault, but you know, that's the thing they're going to really think. This is when we can be introduced to the captain of the guard. Maybe the captain of the guard can be something that was introduced in episode three and then all the way through. So he's been the guard for a while. We've probably seen him. We've probably interacted with him. We probably really like him. And that's when he's like, hey, I got a tip that the Vikings are going to be coming. So we need to prepare. So they do prepare. See, this is the trick. So the next episode, episode six, they have another battle. Blood, guts, gore, the whole shebang. And then they retreat. And that's when a um, maybe one of the other gargoyles be like, wow, this army is a lot less big this time. And really notice that but you know not think anything of it so obviously we as the audience are gonna know ha, something's up but the gargoyles and the townspeople probably not episode uh the captain of the guard tells them that all the gargoyles should go and hunt out the people who retreated and either slay them or convince them to never come back again the gargoyle goliath says no there's no need to take everyone out there besides we need someone to watch the hatchery and the young gargoyles goliath has a wife so he's gonna tell the wife to stay because that's what he does with the cartoon and then she is alone for like a thousand years and she becomes a bad guy but we're not gonna worry about that we're gonna worry about the fact that she's staying here and Hudson and Goliath are gonna run out and maybe bring a, even a couple more, so like a, a group of gargoyles, because these are the these are the the same Vikings that killed the king earlier. So you know maybe the maybe the gargoyles have some kind of like vendetta or whatever. So they go out and they're like, "Ooh, I hear horses or whatever." So in the cartoon, the horses are empty and they realize they've been tricked, and that's when they fly back, and then everything is bad. So that's what's gonna happen. They're gonna go out there, they're gonna see that there's no th nothing on the horses, they're gonna be like, shit, the sun is coming up and everything is bad. Uh, so at the end of this episode is the sun coming up, them turning into stone, and the Vikings basically coming in and destroying everything in the castle, taking it over, taking the princess and the queen hostage. At the end, just like in the cartoon, it's gonna be revealed that the captain of the guard betrayed the gargoyles and the Scottish people, and then that's when the Viking King is going to say, well, they, these, these gargoyles have killed my men. And he kills all the gargoyles that are in, like, that are stone that he can see in the castle. There's a hatchery where some of, where the main cast of gargoyles are going to be staying. Um, but the ones that are out there, this is going to in include children gargoyles, gargoyles we've gotten to know. You know, it's just all these gargoyles and they turn them, in, they, they smash them. <laughs> And now these gargoyles are dead, which are going to make us mad, and they're going to make Goliath and the others mad when they get back. Which, speaking of which, next episode, hey, Goliath is now, it's now nighttime. Um, in their cartoon, I think the Vikings tried to smash Goliath's statue that they find, but they, you know, they were too late. And then he, like, yeets them off the cliff. Well, he is actually just going to kill them, probably rip off their heads with his meaty hands and just gonna go ham. He's gonna, he's essentially a raging barbarian in D&D. &D. I would like to rage 
Let's go. He goes back to the castle and everybody's in chains and stuff. The other gargoyles that haven't gotten smashed the night before get out of the hatchery. And then we have this huge battle where we're killing off the Vikings and saving the Scottish people. And the Scottish people realize the gargoyles have been on their side this entire time. And the princess and the wizard are going to be, like in the cartoon, in a separate room up somewhere away from everybody else. When Goliath swings in, it's going to happen just like it does in the cartoon. They, uh, the princess runs away. The uh, Vikings go after him. The wizard assumes that the princess is dead or the, the queen. I keep saying princess. It's the queen, but it's the same person. After the Vikings have been pushed back or all of them have been killed, he tells all the gargoyles that are awake. He's going to say, I cut instead of saying the spell is whenever they are like the castle goes above the sun, uh, above the sun or above the clouds. Just make it a thousand years. There's no reason to be so fucking complicated. So the spell is just going to be, hey, these guys stoned for a thousand years. We don't want to fucking deal with them in our lifetime or our grandchildren's lifetime. Or even our great grandchildren. Nope. None of that shit. You're stoned. Goliath saves the queen, learns that the captain of the guard has been uh has betrayed him um i would like for Gar for goliath to forgive the captain of the guard for whatever reason we can probably give the captain of the guard a good reason for betraying the people maybe he thinks the queen is shitty or whatever doesn't really matter i just want goliath to be the bigger man here because it would be really cool to see the human being the monster and the monster being human fucking hooray for themes. The captain of the guard and the uh, the Viking king both die. They both fall off the cliff. That'd be really cool. Or it'd be really cool to see like the wife fly in and kill him anyway. So it really starts this discourse between the two. All of the others have been turned to stone. But at the end of the cartoon, at the end of that, the wife isn't over there. It's You learn that she's been awake this in th for a thousand years. So it'd be really cool for her to just basically yeet them off of the cliff or kill them and then she just fucks off or does something i don't know maybe they fight and she fucks off i don't know life goes back with the with the queen and the wizard's like oh shit i done fucked up and then goliath is like all right let's put my people where they're supposed to be and um yeah can you please make them turn to stone because all the kids are fucking dead and um, all of my other people are dead except these guys, so just turn me into stone with them. And then, uh, yeah, Prince, the wizard does that, and then that would be the end of episode 9 or 8, whichever one we're on. And then the next episode would start, I mean, that could be its own season. You could probably extend it to, like, 13 episodes, and that would be its first season. And the season, then the next season, they're in New York because the fucking rich guy puts a castle on top of a skyscraper. Oh shit. And uh, there you have it. It is, that is uh, my quick band-aid fix for Gargoyles. If you haven't watched Gargoyles, if you were too old whenever it came out or you were too young, Disney Plus has it and I 100% recommend if you have Disney Plus to go ahead and at least give a few episodes a watch because I think it's really good and the voice actors are super good, except maybe Eliza. I don't really like her, but I like Goliath's voice actor. Very, very buttery smooth. Um, so I hope that you liked this video. This was definitely an on the spot. I am sick and I need to do something productive kind of video. I am working on this Twilight re uh, redo, but uh, as I said before, I do have a lot. I don't have a lot of spare time. I work a lot, so it will be out eventually. I'll try to make smaller videos. Let me know if there's anything you guys want me to yak about while I'm working on this that I can you know, do pretty quickly. Yeah, I have a Patreon. If you'd like to help ease my financial burdens, you can go ahead and uh, support me through Patreon. Or if you don't want to do a monthly Patreon, I do have a Ko-Fi where you can throw me a couple of bucks if you so choose. Anyway, here's a heart just for you. <laughs> Safe for later. Use right now. I don't really care. It's your heart. You do you. And I will see you in the next video. Later, potato. Yeah. <laughs>and I'm so glad that I like I know you know the goal in life is to like become a big youtuber or whatever but man it's pretty cool not being a big youtuber because I don't have to worry about adsense or anything else like that I make more money on patreon than I do with adsense fuck youtube
welcome.